Good morning. The subject of my lecture is molecular crystal structure prediction. Can it be used for design of pharmaceuticals? Talking about molecular crystal structures, people might come up with the images of protein, enzyme, or pharmaceuticals. Indeed, molecules is very common in nature and is quite relevant to our daily life. So in physical science, there is a continuous, continuous ambition to predict the molecular crystal structures by the, uh, provided they know the chemical formula. Then we can use this way to synthesize the, molecule, uh, the pharmaceuticals with desired properties. Thus, it could be meaningful. It can guide the, the people to synthesize the molecules in the laboratory. So, can we, de can we predict the molecular crystal structures? The answer was simply no. At, at the age of 1994, at that time, people, see, people wrote a very famous article and uh, they summarized the, the, uh, the situation. At that time, they have to confess that, that they, it's what, it was impossible to predict crystal structures. Talking about the prediction of crystals is actually to find the configuration with the lowest, lowest energy, so it's mathematically a global optimization problem. In the last decades of the new century, people have devised a few of methods to predict the crystal structure. Among, among them, USPEC Universal Structure Predictor of ext ec Evolutionary Extography is one of the most, most efficient method to predict the molecular crystal, to predict crystal structures. It can predict the crystal structure containing atoms at up to 100 by evolutionary, by powerful evolutionary approach. So one might speculate that if it's possible to directly use this method to predict molecular crystals. However, we have to understand that molecular crystals are quite different from the normal atomic crystals because they usually have a large number of atoms and it contains many sparse space. Thus, it, indica it indi indicates that the saturation space here could be very huge. And also, most of all, um, organic compounds are a lot dynamically stable. It means that they, if we start from a given chemical formula, C25OH, the chemical formula of ethanol, we start, we do prediction, and after, after prediction, we might end up with the mixture of hydrocarbon compounds and the water, but no longer ethanol molecules anymore. Last but not least, the molecular compounds tend to have pretty uneven symmetry operation. Here, as we know, crystal structures can be categorized by symmetries or more precisely in crystallographic language space group. So here is just the, a comparison for between inorganic crystals and uh, organic crystals. It's, it can be clearly seen that they, for organic crystals, they tend to have, um, pre tend to prefer some particular, in particular space groups compared to the inorganic crystals. So it indicates that when we do our structural search, we don't have to, for molecular crystals, we don't have to go through all the possible configurational space. Instead, we can just focus on the configuration space with, the, with those preferred symmetry, uh, space groups. Here we have the we have the re recipe number one. We can use apply we can apply symmetry to solve this problem. Another concern which has been addressed is the decomposition. We don't want the decomposition of molecules. So during our structural search, we can always put the most straightforward method. The way is to apply constraint. We also we always put always keep the geometry of the molecule as a rigid unit so that the geometry of the molecule can be preserved. So after, after applying this constraint, we are no longer doing global optimization, but constraint global optimization. 
So here comes our constrained evolutionary algorithm. Following the standard uh, approach of evolutionary algorithm, we need to generate structures randomly. And then we send these structures for local optimization. And then we select, we select the structures according to the, energy, according to the energy. And then we use the selected structure to generate the new structure by a set of variation operators. So because during the selection process, they struck, they, the good genes of good of structures have can be maintained. Thus, population by population, they, they, they good structure, uh, they better structures can be found until it arrives at the For the case of molecular crystals, we mainly made two adaptions. First of all, we apply uh, we apply symmetry when we generate structures. Also, we apply constraint when we select the structure, and uh, during, this, during this stage of variation operation, we have a set of operators to, multi, to generate the structure according to the old structures. So we can took two selected structures as parents, and then we took one fraction from each component and then combined the two fractions together. Thus, we can get a new structure or we can just simply take one parent structure and mutate the atoms or molecules inside by rotation or translation. Thus, we get a new structure. Here, since we need, we need to make, we may apply constraint, we, we always keep the, the molecules as the, as the rigid unit so that during the variation process, geometry of the molecules can be always preserved. This method can be, uh, can be applied for many systems. For instance, we can study the high pressure behavior of molecules at a, at a planetary condition. We can use it to design the pharmaceutical materials, which is probably the most promising field for this method. And we can, al we can also even extend this method for, to study inorganic systems. Those complex structures containing molecular units, which is very common in hydro hydrogen storage materials and uh, some minerals. We have done a lot of tests, and uh, for molecular systems, we study the ammonia, carbon, carbon dioxide, and the benzene. We basically, we can easily reproduce the experimental results. And we also study the inorganic systems, like magnesium boron hydrides, which is a promising kind of hydrogen storage materials. And we also study the elemental boron, which, which, contain, which has a, were extremely complex structures. However, using our method, we can get the ground state with significantly less time cost compared with other available methods. Not only producing the no results, we also have some exciting results on methane under pressure. Methane is known to, to be an abundant composition in planets like Solar, uh, Uranus, and Neptune. The high, pre high pressure behavior of methane is, is thus in fundamentally used in planetary science. So people have constructed a, a very complex phase diagram for methane. However, due to the limitation of experimental technique, most of the structures are, are unknown. Especially for the case of methane A, which has a stability range from, from 5 GPA to 10, about 9 GPA. Experimental X-ray diffraction pattern found that this structure contain, should contain 21 molecules. Due to its complexity, the structure cannot be solved. So we tried our method. Indeed, we find a structure which could ex match the experimental results very well. And uh, we also in further studied, uh, is studied the, the structure from the point of view of topology. We found this structure is actual, actually follows an axohedral packing. 12 molecules are forms the axohedral, and the one molecules are sitting in the, in the center of axohedral while the remaining eight molecules are outside the axohedron, occupying the high symmetrical sites. We explained the unusual number of 21 in crystallography. 
Also, I'd like to remind you that this complex structure contains 105 atoms. And the 105 atoms is so far the highest record in crystal structure prediction, as we know. As I mentioned before, this pharmaceutical materials is probably one of probably the most promising field for this method. We test our method for some pharmaceutical molecules, for instance, glycine. We studied which is a simplest, which is the simplest type of amino amino acid molecule. We studied the phase diagram of glycine from the, from zero to up to to GPA. We found uh, several polymorphs of glycine with different stability range, which are alpha, alpha glycine, beta glycine, and uh, gamma glycine. All of uh, our results could 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 match the experimental observations very well, so that it confirm this successful test test confirms that uh, our. This, our method could be applied to study pharmaceutical materials. So in conclusion, we take the concept of constrained global optimization. We developed a new method which can be very efficient to predict crystal structure of for molecules. And it can find, it can use the to study the systems with different molecule shape and the different chemical chemical environment and uh, it can be extremely powerful in studying large systems containing up to hundreds of atoms in the unit cell. It can be potentially useful in pharmacy design and also it can be extend, extended to study the complex inorganic materials containing molecular units. So finally, I'd like to thank, thank my advisor Adam, Professor Adam Organov for the advising and uh, also Professor Stokes for providing the symmetry code to generate the crystal structure and uh, Dr. Colin Glass is loaded the first part of the program and uh, thanks Dr. Lyakov and Dr. Popovos for insightful discussions and this method have been implemented into WSPEC which is available online and for those of you who are interested in our program, you are very, you are very welcome to download it from the website.